Gator Nation, your boy Pat Young back in the building. You already know, you're on the Young and the Rowdies tuning in for another exceptional episode. And let me tell you a reason why I'm so excited about this episode is because uh, this is not an athlete. Um, this is not a former player, but someone that has been wholeheartedly instrumentally instrumental to the Florida Gators program in these last 11 seasons as far as keeping guys healthy and uh, mentally strong and tough in the weight room. Um, but we, before we get into the episode, as I always say, I just want to thank you guys for just taking the time to listen in on my podcast. It's been an honor being a part of the Field of 68 Media Network and just plugging in and diving in on the awesome lives of Florida Gator basketball players, coaches, staffs, and whoever has had a hand in the program. So without further ado, let's dive into episode four of season two. As I said, this guest that I'm so excited about, uh, one of the smartest, but he won't say it, extremely humble, uh, extremely hardworking, instrumental, as I said, in the success of the Florida Gator program. Um, I am honored. He's taught me everything that I know when it comes to training, and I'm sure there's still so much that I don't know. Um, but without further ado, let's introduce the head strength and conditioning coach, Preston Green, with an awesome backdrop. That's what I was talking about, baby. How you doing, P-Money? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, thanks for having me, man. This is going to gonna be great. It's, it's, uh, it's exciting. It's an honor. Obviously, I love having conversations with you. Um, the best thing is, is like I'm not training you right now. You're not trying to ask questions in between sets, like to get more rest. And I get upset. So like this is this is kind of new for me and you. But uh, yeah, man, you're 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 still in some of these pictures, the championship pictures and all that in this room. And uh, I thought, you know, with your experiences here in this room, some really good, but like some really bad. Uh, and they spark some more, uh, you know, uh, inquiries and, and memories for you and thoughts and ideas. And, and yeah, yeah man, I'm so like. I'm going to take you back also in here. So it's kind of a win-win. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I'm, I think I was in the second row, uh, to, to your right. I think the second or third seat, will you get was always sitting next to me, always biting his nails. Correct, <laughs> like, correct, correct. Yeah. Sometimes I remember just like fighting sleep. Cause it's always like that middle of the day, uh, where you get that lull where we would have video, um, but yeah, some memories good, some memories not so good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So we we can get into all that. Like, you want to interview me? Well, I can kind of interview you too, and we can tell some some stories. But you know, as as we said earlier on the phone today, uh, we, you know, where the conversation flows, you know, I'm not I'm not afraid. You know, it happened. What what happened? It helped me become a better man. Uh, I definitely had to get yeah, I had to get my behind shoot out of. Far too many times and seeing other guys getting kicked out of that room as well. But before <laughs> we get into that, um, I guess the most is that the fans will want to hear is just about the current season uh, or this upcoming season. And and I guess a little bit about last year, you know, just dealing with, um, you know, because normally you have a pretty structured routine for like the, the season, your, your programs, your protocols, um, how many guys that you have in there at a time. Um, that you're training and, and just the whole and then COVID um, and, the, and, the, and the things with that just changed everything. So how was last year and adjusting with with all those uh, regulations that you had to follow? You know, that's one of the things I've tried to block. It's like when you have a bad game, you try to block yeah. it out and like move on, you know, next play, Patrick, next play, Patrick, next play. Kind, kind of the same thought process for me as a as a strength and performance coach, because Last year, like, we didn't have a summer. We didn't have an off season. And it's like trying to, I use the expression, uh, it's like trying to light a wet firecracker. Like, your team's not going to be very powerful, you know, if you try and do that. So, like, we, we were shut down, I think, goodness, till we kept pushing it back and pushing it back. I think, like, the last week of July, the first week of August is when we came back. You know, and so we missed my only 12 weeks uh, of, of an off season, you know, because the rules have changed so much where you guys play every day year round and, and so forth. So I, I lost my 12 weeks. So we came back with the rules of three guys at a time spaced out or whatever it was. I don't even remember anymore. Um, 
But like we came back and it's like, okay, we have to start practice. We have to do individual instruction. We have to, uh, you know, do conditioning. We have to do strength training. Like you got all these variables that need a lot of attention and a lot of intensity and effort. And, you know, as, as an athlete, like you can't do everything at once. So we kind of had to really uh, be smart and efficient and prioritize what we were going to work on because, you know, everything was kind of condensed. Um, so yeah. moving forward, you know, this summer was like awesome. It was back to normal. Um, we got to do strongman on Fridays. I had my 12 weeks. You know, there was like uh, minimal running and it, it was just it was normal. Um, yeah. so, so for me, I, I was a much happier person, uh, right. most of the time during, uh, during this off season than, than the one that we obviously didn't have last year. Yeah. And that's what, you know, a lot of people don't, don't get necessarily. Cause when I, I had Mike White, coach white on, um, and just the fact that the things in which you, you normally do to, to plan and, and prepare for your season, those things are out of whack. And not only that you know, relationships and bonds are really built over, <laughs> you know, doing those really hard, hard things that no one wants to do when you think you're going to die, when, you know, you got to run all the, the 22s or uh, what, what was, what, I remember how we prepare for conditioning. We do the ladders where it'd be three up and back, five, seven, nine, 11, up, up to 15. I could never get 15. I never got 15 <laughs> in my time with you. I just hated it. I hated doing 15. I don't know. What's the time on that? Is it, is it two minutes, a minute and something? You, you, you want me to be really transparent with you? And this is this. Go for it. And you can ask the next teams after you. I think you frustrated me so much. I actually went up to coach Donovan's office and my direct words were coach, I can't deal with this guy anymore. I, I can't deal with him. Like he will not run. I'm like, he needs to either be a shot putter where he's got to throw one object as far as he can throw it. And he's like done for the day. Like uh, since you uh, graduated and moved on, we have not run a 15 cents. Wow. <laughs> so, Is but that yeah. Compassion <laughs> I'm hearing. Yeah. But we'll do uh, like the metabolic ladders. Yeah. We will go up to 13 and so forth. And it's, it's different each year based on uh, on our personnel and so forth. But, uh, yeah, we do a lot of those and a lot of the five and a half finishes. And we, we had good times back then, you know. I wasn't the worst. Demont How many times did it take Demontre Harris to pass conditioning? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's not go there because, <laughs> okay, L let's not go there. You know, let's just not. The, 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 the viewers don't need to have that negativity in there. Nope, 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 nope. Because nope. then I'm going to get like upset and angry again. And like, someone's going to pay the price for that. Like, no, I'm Hey, that's fine. You know, I, I just remember, um, gosh, uh, the, I would say my least favorite time was like, you know, maybe right after the season, you know, the season's over all the, you know, our heads are down because, you know, maybe we lost to uh, Louisville or Michigan. And then you're like, well, it's time for me to go to work on these guys. And yeah. You know, I'm I'm having the mindset. Okay, you know, it's not going to be too bad. We're gonna we're, we're gonna work out. We're gonna do some training. And like, it's, Preston's first off, it's not working out. We're training first off. So get that out of your mind. We're coming here to get better. And then that that first week in the off season, number one uh, off season, I was like, did I had no idea this body composition. And if you can just break down to, to our listeners, what German body comp, like what a workout, what a, what a session would look like. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, there's many different forms of German body composition training that, that we'll use for you guys um, specifically. Now I remember you were the one that were complaining because we lost to Louisville. We were up 11 with seven to go or whatever. And, full meltdown and we came back and you know and uh as soon as we came back coach donovan's like what is wrong with our team what do we need to do to, for next year like we had this meeting and it was like go time so he inspired me uh so i said okay, let's give the guys a week off and and uh you know and, and start training from there and uh, the system that i prefer to use is i well you can't say it anymore because of it's 2000 and 
21, but it's death by body comp for athletes. It's a, uh, it's a really intense training system. It's basically like a reconditioning phase because think about it, you know, you guys have been playing basketball from October all the way to basically the end of March. Uh, the volume, as far as like the amount of reps you guys do in the weight room of building up lactic acid, it's very, very minimal in season. So we have to basically reacclimate and recondition our players when season's over to set you guys up for like the advanced stuff in, in the off season. Um, so it's basically a system where you do lower body with incomplete rest, like 30 seconds rest into a upper body movement. So you're kind of supersetting lower, upper, lower, upper. It's an evil, evil, evil thing to do but it will drive up the lactic acid so much in the body. Like you don't have a choice, but to get in shape. Like your, you use your body's either going to do it or it's going to shut sure. down. And uh, so that's kind of the system that we use. It's miserable, um, but we'll just do it for two, three, four weeks. Uh, and then we'll move on obviously to our, to our off season. But yeah, it's, it's not like season's over. Let's go do a little bit of this and hang out and talk about the season and reflect. It's like, no, we're going to start training big difference from that and working out like we're training uh, in order to prepare yes. for next season. Cause you know, you, you played for absolute certified maniac who it's like yesterday's over with we're in the moment and let's get ready. You know, and that just kind of right now, out. right now. Yes. Right now, right now. Yes. Right now, right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember um, one of my German, I mean, and, and fan, Billy, Billy, Billy Jr was my workout partner um, most of the time. Cause I was, my, my issue with like, especially in the season was uh, I, hypertrophy. I, I would just gain muscle um, so fast during the season that I just remember Coach Donovan being, I don't know if he was mad at you or if he was mad at me, or just a combination of just both. That in, in the middle of the season, I go from 250 to 260. And he's like, how's this guy gaining weight in the middle of the season? I'm like, and it's not, it's not muscle or it's not fat. It was, it was like, it was muscle. And as we know, the more muscle you have, especially playing in a game of basketball where it requires conditioning, um, you know, I would get tired so quick in my energy level. And, and I just remember the program. You actually, at one point it was Michael Frazier, Billy Jr. And I um, on a program where one of the workouts was like back squat, back squat pull-ups. Back squat, pull up, step ups. Back squat, pull. It was it was a succession of every exercise up to ten. And the finisher was after the last one was the sled push. I never thrown up so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a thing of beauty. Poor poor little Billy. You know, it's little just, Billy. Those those bad genetics. Like he was just there for support and to be a good teammate. And I said, Billy, look, man, like. I'm going to be honest. This is going to be the, like, we're not going to speak when this is over. We, we can reestablish our relationship. This is going to be the hardest thing you will ever do in your life. And I said, you're, you're going to do this for two reasons to be a good teammate. Cause I'm not dealing with Patrick young. You're going to deal with Patrick when we do this. <laughs> and I said, look, man, like you want to be mad at somebody, be mad at mom and dad, because you didn't choose your parents very wisely. Like you got bad genetics, man. Like, so don't be mad at me, but uh, you know what? That, that's a great story. And I'm going to tell you another secret, which uh, I've carried this guilt with me since the day you left here, man. Whenever oh, I teach uh, overseas or when I have students in um, and I'm teaching performance training and strength training, I always tell the story about that system. It was 10 sets nine sets, eight sets, seven sets, and so forth. You add an exercise each round. And because Coach Donovan's like screaming at me and I'm like, coach, like he's not lifting heavy weights. He's not getting big. Like, it's not my fault. Like the guy is a genetic freak. He's one in 500,000 of the population. Like, what do you want me to do with this guy? And he's, I don't care, just get him in shape. He plays for three minutes and he's tired. He's exhausted, yep. like, he's exhausted. And so anyways, I put you on that training system and the truth is you're only supposed to do it like once a week, maybe, maybe oh twice a gosh. week, like a short time. I had you do it for six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and true, I don't know if you remember this, but I think you got mono at the end of it for like oh. a week. Like your immune system shut down oh, because your body was so fatigued. 
I was so <laughs> I was so sad because you know you had me that was going into my junior year. Yeah. You had me in the that was the best shape I think I'd been in in my life of yeah. cuz yeah, you had me on that program and I it took me a while cuz as you can imagine, it's like having you know that once that once per week Friday workout where you know it sucks. You yeah. know, and you, and you kind of dread it, even though you got your other stuff Monday through Thursday, but you're like, ah, oh, that Friday. It was that every day for me. And it took me a while to finally embrace it. Because some days, you know, as, as an immature, you know, 18, 19 year old kid, you don't get, you don't get the full picture. You know, that's why I just really appreciate you just with your consistency. And I know it had to be tough. It has to be tough at times for, for you guys as grown men dealing with, with kids at times that, that just, you know, they don't, I don't think the intention is always to, uh, you know, be negative and detrimental, but they just, you just don't get the whole picture and the why, but I just definitely appreciate you and coach Donovan just being patient and working with us to, to helping us to like one day get it. And then when it finally clicks, it's like, gosh, finally, but it just sucks that. Yeah, I got, I got mono and that three, you know, couldn't do anything for three weeks. <laughs> I know. You know, going into that, going into that season, but it was still a great, still a great um, uh, training for my for my mental capacity and just pushing through. And when I didn't want to do it, still showing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that was the great thing about Coach Donovan because he always had that message to you guys of his favorite word over, you know, adversity, overcoming adversity. But he was the world's best at teaching you specifically you to like overcome your fears and yeah. not be imprisoned by them um for you to take responsibility of your life like he i think he told you like the biggest uh prison is your own mind and you have the key yeah. in your own pocket so like you know like embrace your fears and so forth and, and let's grow up and you got a great thing ahead of you. And so like, he's telling you that message and that actually enabled me to push you to limits above and beyond that. Like if you didn't have a head coach supporting you like that, then I can't be successful. But yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the blame for giving you mono, man. Like I never kissed you. I didn't give you mono that way, but, but you know, Hey, I'll, I'll take the blame for that. But, but you know, it was, it was that you're one of the thank, best. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're one of the best success stories though of like, where you were mentally, yeah, as well as physically, and growing up and maturing and and accepting me of like Patrick, I'm not trying to like make your life miserable. Like I have your best interest. Like I want yeah. you to be great, you know. And 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 so I think that's kind of how our relationship grew. Is as you matured, you know, you understood like I actually do have your best interest. And, and yeah. look at you now, man. You know. It's just so, you know, it's just, it's just like you look back and you're like, gosh, why was I just so hard headed? Why was I so stubborn? Why was I so resistant to the people that wanted me to achieve all of my dreams and goals? Um, and that's just understanding that, uh, you know, everyone has their own process, processes and experiences. And, you know, just attest to you and Coach Donovan, you know, you don't give up on people sometimes. It, knowing that, that ebb and flow, of, okay. Sometimes I got to get on them. Sometimes I just got to stay back. But, you know, it's other times like, hey, like, we got to get better today. So I, I don't care how you're feeling. Like, I'm, I'm getting up in your butt. Yeah. But how has it been, you know, you got eight new guys <laughs> this year. Yeah. Eight, eight new players. <laughs> that's that's a first. Yeah, yeah. Players. You know, and it, it's really been interesting because it's not eight freshmen. It's not eight untrained new guys who you can, you know, slowly mold and, and change one behavior at a time and, and just kind of go slow. I mean, it's a mix of, of grad students and senior, you've seen, you know, the whole thing. So um, it's been a, it's been a huge challenge for me of basically number one, you know, I wasn't part of the recruiting process. So I didn't know, I don't know them when they came in, like, you know, you do with the freshmen and so forth. You, you, you have a relationship during the recruiting journey. So like I had to figure out quickly who responds to what, can I yell at this guy in a positive way? Uh, do I need yeah. to just use this style with this guy? Like I had to learn like, what do they respond to in order to push them the right way uh, as well as physically of, 
what backgrounds do they come from? You know, who needs what, what program they need, do they need to be on? How weak is this guy? You know, it, it's been a huge challenge for me, but I, I love it because it's, it's made me better um, as well as yeah. you know, obviously making them better and preparing them to, you know, physically ready to come, you know, to compete for the season. But it's, it's been a challenge, not just physically wise, but personality wise. And I'll tell you what though, um, right. Coach White, Coach White's, and I don't know if he touched on this, but he has done an unbelievable job of like getting good, good people with no egos who are, are selfless, no entitlement. It's hard to find eight college basketball players with that makeup who, who are actually good. Uh, so he's done an unbelievable job of, of bringing in a good mix of, of people who actually like each other and get along from the get-go. And so that's, that's made it a little bit easier. It's made it more fun, you know? Yeah. But we, yeah, have, the conditioning, we awesome. have the conditioning test tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll see how that Oh, really? Goes. Yeah, and every single one of the new guys, they've all told me it's like the – they said it's during Strongman, so I'm like, it's one or the other. They said it's the hardest thing they've ever done. I'm like, you just ha- – you play basketball. You got to run, man. Like, it's not that hard, but it's yeah. the mental, it's the mental uh, challenge of overcoming uh, what we talked about. So, yeah, Isn't I'm excited. It just, is it the same setup, you know, where you break up – you break up in two groups, and uh, uh, I think it's 50 50- – is it 58 seconds for the guards and 62 seconds for the bigs on the, on the 300? Yeah. 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 It's a five, it's 10 court lengths. So five down and backs. Uh, the guards have 60 seconds, maybe 50 seconds. 58 with coach Don. I don't know, it uh, but it's, it's 60 seconds and 62 for the bigs. And then they get two minutes rest and they have to make five of them. Can't just make yeah. two of them. And you know, they have to make all five, but we've trained for that for the last, uh, five weeks and, and they're set up for success. And now, you know, you just got to show up under the lights and, and perform. Oh, show up 6 a.m. Uh, yep. Don't eat. Don't eat before. <laughs> just maybe drink a little bit of water. You know what's so interesting, too? What I, what I, I wish I would have done more consistently, because I just remember, I, I think what inspired me was hearing about, like, a quarterback or someone training with the lineman because he wanted to get stronger. And I was like, you know, I'm going to run with the guards. And I just remember doing that a few times. And it's crazy. The mental, the mental part, like when I ran with the bigs, I'd make it just in time. But when I ran with the guards, I'd make it just in time with the guards. So it's like, am I, was I holding back or was it, um, I don't know, just like there's always an extra gear yep. in there. But having, having people, are, you know, as we said, as we were talking about earlier, COVID took away uh, and the restrictions from you guys having those those bonds and being able to go through that stuff together as a whole team and it just had to be so difficult because you're not you know you're you're not like one of these strength coaches that's like gotta scream and rah rah and like all the time you're just you're more so like all right this is our job let's do it professionally let's stay positive let's let's just get let's get the damn thing done and um you know and I love that consistency because it's like you know, you're going to get on guys like, come on, half rep. <laughs> no, like Jake, Jake, the snake, he's the half, half rep king, but um, it's just got to be so, so cool with what you do because, um, you know, I've, I've played overseas and I've, and, you know, you don't realize how good of coaching and uh, staff and the people around you are until you're gone and you go somewhere else. And not that it's not good in the NBA, but I go overseas and I'm like, you remember I, I was taking when I went over to Turkey. I'm like, hey, Preston, can you send me a program? Because like, I got nothing going on here, and I want to stay. Uh, you know, I don't want to get injured. But you know, what can you tell people? Like, as the kids or whoever's listening, how important it is to just embrace those around you and just the, the every part, every part of the process of getting better. Yeah, I think the first thing that comes to mind is is like one of the the intangible. I guess, responsibilities of my job. It's not just me writing the best program because there's no magical program. It doesn't matter what I design and so forth if you're not going to do it consistently in a a high level. But beyond that, you know, I've always had the belief that like, I want to put you guys in situations that are like uncomfortable. And I'm not saying ways to make you miserable and hate life, but like, challenge you in different ways to, to, you know, to to basically take you out of your comfort zone 
the same way, you know, coach does during practice and so forth, like creating adversity in practice. Well, those go hand in hand, especially in the off season of like, I want to challenge, you know, you guys and our guys and, and put you in uncomfortable situations, but give you a chance to set you up for success. If you, you know, embrace it and, and give me your all. Uh, and then beyond that, you know, I think one of the things uh, that's really important for, for people, especially young athletes to understand is like, especially in today, because there's so much motivation on your cell phone and mm -hmm. social yeah. media and all that trash, you know, it's like you guys have so much external motivation coming your way. It's nonstop, whether it's a tweet, it's a quote, you know, all stuff's good and it has its place. But for me to constantly yell and scream and have to externally like if I have to motivate you to to like run or condition or train like that's a problem like you're probably you're not going to be as good as you can be there's times and places for that but like you this is one of the things coach Donovan actually was about you when we had that I can't deal with this guy meeting anymore you know and, and I think he actually told you this is like he said to you Patrick you need to make Preston better like you need to go into the weight room and say, Hey, what do you got for me today? I want to get, I want more. I want more. I want extra, like challenge me. And I think that's one of the things that's really helped me grow and evolve, you know, which will go to some of the, the, the younger players in today's generation is like, yeah. when you walk in for your practice or your workout or your individual instruction, whatever it may be, like you shouldn't have to be externally motivated. Like you should want to, internally get better yeah uh, and there's times and places for me to push you and things like that yeah but uh, i think that's kind of the art of coaching you know right. it's like knowing when to all right patrick really needs a little kick today and or whatever you know but uh but yeah i want to i want to put you guys in uncomfortable situations because you're going to be in that situation in practice and ultimately you're going to be in that situation you know in, in a game Yeah, I mean, through through adversity is how you you grow, and yeah, I mean, you really get to see how if you really want it. They, I, I just can remember, yeah, from my even from my freshman year, Coach Donovan talking about the internal and the external motivations and, and all those things, and uh, it wasn't until it's not until adversity hits where you really see like how bad you really want it or have that reality check, and if if your expectations and reality are not aligned. That's where you just get so much frustration and it just bubbles up and bubbles over to everything and to just sucks. And then your, your mode, your effort sometimes, and then being, it just bleeds over into all, all sorts of things. But, you know, let's, you know, this, as we, as you, you clarified for me earlier, I thought it was season 10. This is, this is season 11 for the one and only Preston Green at the realms of being the uh, head for the Florida Gators. So uh, before we get into that, let's let's talk about this. How did your journey start? You know, with wanting to, was this was this always something that you wanted to do, or like growing up, where like where did it start? Yeah, you know, my, thank my, you. What's that? All right, I said you think it's, it's been a minute, huh? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. thought about that. Um, yeah, it's crazy. 11, this would be my 11th season. Um, the longest I've been anywhere and I've stayed here for a reason, you know, uh, but yeah, you know, I'm one of the very, very few, I've told this story a thousand times, but if, I don't think it ever gets old because I'm one of the few, few blessed, lucky people in this world who knew what they wanted to do when they were 14 years old. Wow. <laughs> Like I, I knew I wanted to be a strength coach when I was 14. And uh, so, yeah, I, this was, you know, before the internet existed and all that stuff. So I asked my mother, I said, Hey, I want to go to the library and do some reading. And she's like, what the library? Uh, just cause I, I knew I never had a career as an athlete, you know, I, that just wasn't happening. I'm weak and slow, uh, which doesn't do you very good in sports. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so I went to the library. This was like back in the day, you probably know, but like the Dewey Decimal System, you had to pull out the thing and flip through and, and uh, yeah, in order to find like a, a magazine or a book, you couldn't just, there, you didn't do this back then. 
and, and I'm not old, like I'm actually young, but yeah, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so I came across this journal. It was the journal of Australian sport. And it was written by a guy named Charles Poliquin. And uh, I started reading this and it was just like this epiphany for me. It was just like, wow, this stuff's fascinating. Uh, and it just kind of grew from there. And so I started reading strength training when I was 14, working out in my garage, you know, uh, the whole deal and, and so forth. So anyways, I get into high school and I've been studying and applying this and, and so forth, taking, you know, just reading everything. And when I was 16, I got the nerve to call. I got this guy's home phone number, my mentor. Wow. I won't tell you how I got the number, but I got his home phone number. It took me like three days to get the nerve up to call him. So I call him and uh, he says, hello. And I'm saying, hey, Charles, my name's Preston Green. I'm 16 years old. Blah, 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 blah. I have a question for you. And he says, how to beep? Did you get this number? Bang, click. I was crushed. It's right. like when you, meet, when you meet your idol, your celebrity, and like, it, it was just, it was, it was awful. So anyways, I called him back two days later, kept calling his phone, his home phone. And uh, I actually had a question about glutamine and that kind of like, you know, got him on the phone with me for a little bit. He's like, who's this 16 year old kid? Like, who knows about glutamine? Uh, anyways, took his courses when I was 18 uh, and read everything I could do. And then when I went to college, uh, and you can appreciate this as a former scholarship athlete, uh, I was 17 years old and I went to Clemson and uh, I volunteered in the weight room for a semester. I wasn't even allowed to spot a guy. All I could do was observe and clean. I would like skip class to go and clean the weight room. Like, like who does that, you know? Um, it's like sneaking into a gym to get extra work in at night and you know, so forth. So. Anyways, uh, after my first semester, the head strength coach said, hey, you're really committed to this, you know, you see this and so forth. He actually gave me a scholarship to be a strength coach. So I was a graduate assistant strength coach at Clemson as an undergraduate student. Um, I had five teams on my own. I had like, this is in the ACC, like this is, you know, power five, whatever. No clue what I was doing. Uh, and I'm in like class with the athletes. I remember like, I had to run the volleyball girls at like 6 a.m., hated me. And I'm like walking into class with them at 8.30 in the morning. And they're like, you need to sit over there. He's the way. <laughs> so that's kind of how my journey started and uh, learned everything I could learn, just absorbed everything. And I've just been really fortunate. Um, everywhere I have gone, I did my master's at University of Minnesota. Then I was the strength coach at the University of Arizona. I was the youngest director in NCAA uh, at age 24 at uh, Charlotte, University of North Carolina, Charlotte. Then I went to Stanford. So if you had a map, you can see like I'm all over the, it's kind of like your professional career. You're just yeah, you're yeah. everywhere. I went to Stanford. Uh, then I went back to Clemson and then this maniac calls me. I, I planned on being at Clemson for a long time because my parents retired there on the lake and, and big Clemson family. His maniac head coach calls. I want you to come down for the weekend. Let's just talk. I'll show you around. He's got like this New York accent and it's Coach Donovan. And he brought me down. And I'll, I'll tell you the, the interview story in a minute. But, uh, but yeah, so I've done this since I was 14. I think this is like my 26th year uh, as a strength coach. And uh, I've just done men's basketball since 2003. So, yeah. Quite, quite, a, quite a journey, but to everywhere I've been, I've been around really good people, really yeah. good coaches, but I tell you, I can't take credit for anything because I have been around like really, really, really good high level athletes. Like yeah. you guys are easy to train. Cause like, no matter, especially you, you're, you're a freak, uh, one out of 500,000, but like, no matter what I do with you, like, you're going to, you're going to get stronger. Like you're just, you're, you're go for the challenge. You're ridiculous. Has right? anyone beaten my pull-up record? No. My no. record. Yes. That, that, that will stand forever, forever. Never. So, will. so guys, yeah, we, uh, person uh, had a, like we, you always train for things. You don't before, you know, going for your PR of something and he had us training First off, doing these things. Oh man, I remember this before I before I go into that. I remember Eric Murphy, Will You Get and I were living together. This would have been after this is uh going in after my sophomore year. Yeah, after my so after the sophomore season, 
yeah, us three were living together. And then it was after we lost to Louisville. Um, and we started our off season workouts, our off season training and, uh, never done these before in my life. There are these things called lean away pull-ups. All right, guys, they're called lean away pull-ups. It's where you, you go, go up, you, you pull, you pull yourself up and you slowly like push yourself away from the bar. And pressing is all about tension over time. Is that correct to say? Like, like having your, like a temp, the tempo and, and um, just doing everything controlled uh, just to really um, help with the strength. So it was probably a three or four, maybe five second tempo on the way down. Five. So before five seconds, five seconds down. Oh, and let me tell you, there's no, the reps don't count. If you, <laughs> if you break the tempo. <laughs> so anyways, before, before we, we do the, the lean away pull-ups, we were doing neck bridges on, on a boasting ball. And it seemed like a pretty innocent exercise where it's like you're, you're, uh, you're on your back, um, facing up towards the wall. Then you have the, the boasting ball behind your head and you're doing like, I don't know, 10 reps, three sets of 10 reps, neck bridges. It doesn't matter. And we're doing these lean away pull-ups for the first time. You know, workout, we, fin we finished the, the session and we're like, oh man, we're going to be sore tomorrow, ha, 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 all this stuff. Will, will, <laughs> will you get Eric Murphy and I, we all wake, wake up around the same time the next morning. We could not turn our heads. We couldn't lift our arms. It, we, were, we were literally just like, oh, bro, <laughs> what happened? I can't move. <laughs> it, it lasted, it probably lasted for a few days. It was miserable. Gosh. Where did you learn the lean away pull-ups from? And then you had, you had me doing, I remember one time during, uh, during the body comp, you had me doing burpees and to chin-ups. Like, huh? did, did I like, did I like, <laughs> what did I do to deserve uh, that? I don't remember that. I don't, I don't know. I, I, that must have been a bad day for both of us and, and something that came from upstairs and it trickled down to, to me because, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, the old subscapularis lean away pull-ups. We still do those. And, and uh, I tell everyone, I say, hey, tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up and think of me because you will not be able to wash your hair. You will not be able to brush your teeth. Like, you're going to be really, 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 really sore. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, good times. Good times. Our... The one good thing, though, I think Will had a worse day than that when yes. he, was, he was injured for the tournament. Yes, and uh, I was training him in the hotel. And I forget what, uh, I think Will was just like being pouty, like poor me. I'm like, well, look, man, the sun's going to come up tomorrow. Like, it's going to be okay. And he really upset me. So I looked around and I said, okay, you're going to do 6, 12, 25 on every machine in here. So we would do six, make it lighter. He'd do 12. I'd make it lighter. He'd do 25 in every machine in the hotel gym. And uh, I think he was probably, he was rooming with you, I would assume. He was room, yeah. This was during, this was in, uh, I think Nashville for the, in the yeah. STC tournament. And Will Will was out. Um, I don't know if, if it was his foot or if his knee at the time, but yeah. he wakes up, he wakes up at three or four in the morning. <laughs> I got a nasty phone call. A bad phone call. <laughs> he, woke up, he woke up at three or four in the morning and he's like, Pat, I can't move. Help me. I'm like, what do you want me to do? He's like, bro, I, help. I, we end up having to call and wake up poor Brad. We had to wake up Brad. To yeah, just massage work on therapist. Yeah. yeah. A massage therapist. But Will, yeah, he, he probably gained. I don't know, five to 10 pounds of muscle in that time it was out to the end of the season. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Will was, I felt so bad for him. It was like the, the incentive to not get hurt was to not have to deal with fasting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like your ankle's going to feel a lot better tomorrow. I promise you, you know, so it's all for a reason, man. It's all for a reason. Like just, it's all for a reason, but yeah. What, so what, you were, <laughs> You were just alluding to it. Um, uh, you know, you were at Clemson. You just had a, you know, pretty, pretty solid teams you had over there. And then you get a call from, uh, 
the the guy we know as Billy Donovan. How was that that whole process, and how did you end up getting to Florida? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I was I I was one of I think three that interviewed or something. I was the last guy, and and uh, you know, I was playing with house money because I was really uh, you know really really happy uh, at Clemson and so forth, and just you know, but you guys had established in, in the, you know, the, the teams before you have had established such a winning culture, top five program, back-to-back -back titles, elite eights, you know, everything that has been built here. And uh, so I said, okay, you know, who don't want to go down to Florida for a weekend? Like, let's go check it out. And uh, so, yeah, I, I fly down and uh, this is on a Friday and uh, interviewed with everybody and, and spent some time with coach and, it's, and I'm in like this suit. I didn't know like how hot it was in the swamp. Like I didn't know how hot Gainesville was in <laughs> August. No clue. I'm in this like suit and tie and uh, they're all in like, you know, what I'm wearing and shorts and just really informal. And we're like two hours in this interview in the conference room and coach Donovan, you know, for, for people that don't know coach Donovan, he's a psychiatrist. He's a, a brain surgeon. He's a basketball coach. He's like a lawyer. He, he knows everything about everything, right? So he's like drilling me with all these questions. I'm talking like two, three hours into this thing. I'm sweating profusely, like so hot. And uh, he had asked me like the same question like three times. And I had already answered it. Not once, not twice. So I'd had enough. I, I stood up and I took my jacket off I'm like is it really hot in here or is it me and he's like what are you talking about it's hot in here you know and uh I said coach you have these like bags under your eyes I went at him I, I was done I went at him I said there's you have like adrenal fatigue because this is the third time you've asked me this question either that or you're not listening to my answers and uh I said there's seven stages of adrenal fatigue and you're in stage five stage seven is like death so like I don't know what's going on with you and he says his eyes light up he's like tell me about this like what is this this sounds fascinating and we just like connected right there in that moment it wasn't even about strength training or basketball and and uh just got into like these deep conversations about uh you know nutrition and so forth and i said coach like we're cavemen's with cell phones like that's who we are and he loved that and, and anyway so yeah i went through the interview process and uh Went uh, to get my stuff and head back to the airport. I get to the airport, phone rings, and he says, hey, uh, you know, I want to offer you the job, you know, so forth. And, and this is Coach Donovan style. The head coach that I worked for at Clemson, Brad Brownell, Coach Donovan says, this is before I could even answer yes or no, like, you know, you, you don't leave the room with Coach Donovan until, like, he gets what he wants. Uh, you've been in those meetings many, many, many times. And uh, before I could even oh, answer yeah. – you know, yeah, I'll take the job or whatever. He says to me, J just so you know, I'll call coach Brownell and I'll tell him I've offered you the job and, and, uh, you know, you're going to move forward with this. Um, <laughs> this is a Friday afternoon. Uh, and then he says to me, uh, and so, you know, uh, I need you here Sunday night at five o'clock. That's our first team meeting. We're going to get started up. And, you know, what I said, okay, sounds good, coach. So I fly back to Clemson. I think I had 36 hours, pack up my office the next day, drive down, whatever, come rolling into Gainesville Sunday evening. My life just got, you know, turned upside down. And I walk into this very room at, you know, right at, you know, a little bit early. You know, I'm always, if you're not early, you're late. Yeah. You guys are all sitting in here and he comes barreling in, into this room fired up, you know, first team meeting, summer's over. And uh, first thing he says to me, he says, uh, hey, Preston, did you get a chance to talk with these guys and get with them and let them know, you know, what to expect and your plan for each one of them? <laughs> I'm like, I've been in town for 15 minutes. <laughs> and, uh, and he just like unleashed the fury about an incident that we won't get into that happened in the summer. And he's yelling and screaming. And, and I'm just like, what in the world did I get myself into? And then uh, the next day, I started training you guys in preseason, and here we go. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. It's really interesting <clears throat> hearing you from that, from your, your, you know, your reality and the, and the truth in which, because, like, without me knowing, I just remember you, you were just, like, strictly business 
Cause and I get it, cause like you got just thrown into the fire. It's like, man, I gotta get, <laughs> like I gotta get on, you know, show show these guys and that that uh, you know they hired the right guy and, and can do, uh, you know, great things for each each one of them. But it was, yeah, I mean, that's I didn't had no idea, <laughs> all that happened. So, um, obviously, you, you still have a pretty good relationship with Coach Donovan. I actually got to see him a few weeks ago, and he's all about working out in the sauna. That's his deal now. He he's got a, a pretty pretty good pretty good size sauna, and he's got weights, dumbbells right outside of that thing. And he he's like, Pat, yeah, I just I love it, man. Just getting there with oh, about 15, 15, 20 minutes. You think you can fit in there, big Pat? <laughs> There's no way you can fit in there, big Pat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just get in there. And just, I can lunge. I can lunge. I can do curls. I can squat. And I just I just I'm drenched. I'm just drenched in sweat. It's great. I love it. I love it. It's yeah. great. A good, so a good about it. Me you <laughs> yeah, a good lather, as he says. He calls me after his sauna deal. I've, I got a great lather going on right now. I took your detox pack. It's, you know, I'm just sweating, great lather. And he said, he says to me, and uh, this is, we should probably have like a disclaimer, a liability on, on this podcast. Like, don't try this at home. Like, we're not endorsing getting in the sauna and lifting weights. Like, I think you got to be a certified psychopath to do that. Um, yeah and so he he uh he says hey it's like 200 and whatever degrees in here uh i think i overdid it i need to go lay on the, on the cold tile out there and, and get my core temperature down and I, like what are you doing but but yeah he uh he was great to train. i i have a stack of workouts probably this big and, and they are all of his workouts because He's a mix of dopamine and serotonin, which is like uh, you have to do something different with him every single workout. It's a true story. Yeah. So I train the guy every single day, like Christmas Day, Memorial Day, you name it, uh, eight o'clock at night sometimes after he probably met with you for two hours after a practice. And uh, I had to do a, I had to design a different workout for him like every day. And I'm talking like two years into this thing. I'm like, I'm on my 500th method. I'm like, there's 500 training methodologies or whatever in, in the world. So I, I say, okay, no idea what to do with this guy. But if, if like we do something that we've already done, he's, he's like, he's gonna be mad. And so I went like in the middle of the stack, which is probably like his 150 workout, 150th training session. And I try and repeat it. He comes in 6.30 at night after practice. He's all ready, I'm ready. What do we got today? And so I said, okay, coach, here's what we got, blah, blah, blah. True story. We get through his warm-up sets of, of what we were doing. And he looks at me and he says, we've already done this before. Wow. And I say, no, 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 coach. Like, I changed this or this. And he's like, he's like, no. He's like, I know you guys have staff meetings for hours thinking about my training program. So you guys couldn't come up with anything today. And he's like, we've done that. He he knew, but yeah, he was a he was a handful. But we would put the U two or the classic rock on and kick everybody out. It was like Billy D Power Hour. Thanks, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we we had some good times and and uh, yeah, he was all wow. business. So yeah, he when he trains, it's business. Like Tell you him better him. give wow. him a good training session. Yeah, he gets after. It. <laughs> yeah, he does. But you know what? He always I, told me. I always asked him. I said, Coach, the sessions. I yeah i said coach like you're oh you know, me you're, i'm sorry you cut out sorry there you go no no go ahead Tell, keep, keep going yeah he, he i said coach like you're you're really fit you're really healthy you know you look great you're strong you know you're, you're great cardiovascular shape you know you know, why do you, why do you keep training like a savage like this? Like, why do you want me to, to literally crush you? Like if you, if he didn't walk out of there feeling fatigued, like hmm. he was not happy. And I said, why do you keep doing this? You know? And he said to me, he said, because it helps me coach. And I said, okay. He said, it helps me mentally as much as physically. Like I need this to take my mind to a, a to a special place in order to get ready, you know, for the next game or the next practice. Like, he's like, I need to do this for, for my, it helps me become a better coach that he didn't want to train just to prove something or look good or, you know, whatever it, he, he needs that in yeah. order to perform at a high level. 
you know, as a head coach. And, and I always respected that. I, I really do respect that because, you know, now that I'm like, <clears throat> I'm not playing. And I wore a tank top. I wore a tank top today just so you can see. I still I got it. I can still take you, man. Yes, um, love it. I just like, some, I'm just like, gosh, I, why do I need to kill myself? Like, I, I still get after it every now and then. If I, you know, you can see in the background, there's a, there's a Peloton bike there. Uh, like, I'll burn. I'll, play, I'll do a 30-minute class, and I'll burn 700 calories just getting after it. And I, I love the aspect on the Peloton that, uh, you know, you can compete against the, the people in the class. And I'm like, I'm always going to finish first. Um, but, like, that, keeping that internal motivation, I'm like, I don't need to kill myself. What am I training for? But I remember uh, you were telling me one in one of your workouts with Coach Donovan that you were training him that you were like, Coach, if you can do X, Y, and Z, I'll race you on the track or something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> you just reminded me about that. You got to you got to tell the folks about that one. No, <laughs> no. Because Preston, <laughs> Preston does not do car. He doesn't run, and I don't like to run either. But um, come on, P. Yeah, okay. <laughs> If I want to do cardio, I, I lift weights faster. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. So now I have no shame. I, I'm a, I'm a humble individual. Like I have no shame. So uh, I did learn a lesson though. Like I always had the belief, like, you know, you should never, never gamble on sports. Like just, just don't bet on sports. You know, you're like Vegas is always going to win, you know, whatever. And uh, so we're having this competition and I forget what it was about. Um, but I had to find ways to, to challenge him physically and mentally. And uh, <laughs> boy, I learned a lesson. Uh, number one, like never, ever bet Coach Donovan. Like, don't. <laughs> I said to him, um, if you can do whatever it was, you know. Oh, I think we did the 100 rep chin-ups. I said, I want you to do as many chin-ups, get to 100 as in few sets as possible. And I said, I don't think you can do a hundred chin-ups in seven sets or whatever it was. And, and he said, seven, I think uh, seven sets. He says, I'll do it in six. So he reps wow. out, you know, 20 or whatever it was. And it, I forget. Anyways, he, and I said, if you do this, I had him on an interval program outside of the track. You know how much he loved going outside and doing the sprints. So I said, his program was, he would run four 400s. So 400 is a full lap around the track. He would run four of them. Then he would run four 300s. Wow. Basically like three quarters of a lap. Then he would run four uh, 200s, which is half a lap. Like that was his training. He had times and rest and, and so forth. And uh, he, he was in such great cardiovascular shape. Like when you're doing sprinting or whatever, condition usually it's like two to one like if you have a minute to run you get two minutes rest well you know I, I wanted to really like get down and dirty with this guy he did one to one so if he had a minute 15 to make a full lap he would only get a minute 15 rest like not many people general population people can do that right. so he had done that and I said hey if you can if you get 100 chin-ups in seven sets I will run with you tomorrow <laughs> his eyes lit up it was like game seven of the finals or the five i mean the final four what he was like locked in man and i seriously i got a knot in my stomach i was like sweating i'm like what did i just do okay so get this so then he's like okay i'm gonna do it this was this was like lunchtime so he goes up he's preparing for practice word spread like throughout the building like the whole staff found out about this oh man uh, the whole building that. and it was like oh wow like Preston's gonna have to run like with coach Donovan oh so he comes in after practice that night you guys I think found out about it or whatever he like wins this challenge he does a hundred chin-ups within seven sets or whatever I didn't eat that night. I didn't sleep that night. I was a wreck, like an absolute train wreck disaster. And of course, he's got to send me like this little motivational text that night. And it was like, see you tomorrow. I'm like, okay. And I'm like thinking like, oh, he, he's going he's gonna to be busy. You know, it's like we got a game or whatever to prepare for. Like he's going to forget. Like he's going to get about his day and be busy. Because, you, know, you know, he's pulled in so many directions. First thing. It's like 6.30 in the morning. I pull in in the parking lot. 
I see his like white Toyota Sequoia, Sequoia like already there. Cause you know, he was like the first one in this building every day. I get in, I'm thinking like, oh, he's upstairs preparing notes or whatever, watching film. No, no, no. Standing in the weight room, I open the door and like, there he is. He's like, good morning. And he just like walks right by me. So he's like in my head, right? Anyways, so, <laughs> and now this was like, almost during like my fat Elvis stage, I was like power building or whatever, like trying to get strong and then hadn't done any sort of, of running long story, but oh yeah, he shows up like it was, I forget. It was like one thirty. It was like an hour and a half before practice middle of the day. It's a hundred degrees outside. We walk across and I hear like people talking behind us as we're getting ready to go to the track. It's like the whole staff, like people got their oh, cell phone. Man. I'm like, no, there will be no documentation, but I'm a man of my word. I, I lost. I, I will, you know, fulfill my duty. Uh, I'm an honorable individual, you know, whatever. And uh, so we went out there. First 400, bang. This guy is like a jackrabbit. I mean, it's like Usain Bolt. I'm like, where did he go? Just took right off. Uh, and I made the first one. And I say, okay, coach, uh, we got two and a half minutes rest. He's like, no, 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 no. You're on my rest. It's one to wow. one. He remembered this. And I'm like, oh. anyways, he, we, we, he did, he did the whole workout. And I think I was, he finished everything. And I'm like halfway thinking like, he's got to go. He's going to leave. No, no, no. He sits in the stands. <laughs> in the, yeah. It took me like an hour and a half. I think like my, my 200 sprint, which should be like 28 seconds or whatever. I was banging like a minute and a half. I mean, it was awful. Like, <laughs> seriously, the lowest, the lowest point I've ever been, like ever been devastated, humiliated. I'm like, this guy's a hall of famer. And, and uh, uh, end of the story, I'm done. I'm like getting upset again, like end of the story. <laughs> but yeah, I, I fulfilled my duties. And just let, let's just say it didn't end well for me. That's got to be one of the best stories I've ever heard. It didn't end well for me. So I, I've never challenged anyone. Like when you come back and visit, I'm not going to say, hey, Pat, let's see if we can do, you know, 10 sets of 10. Like not doing it. Not doing it. No. I will do it. I will bet you because I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen you take a jump shot. <laughs> That's another thing that Preston just won't do. I'm a strength coach. I don't, I play, play back. I'm like, come on, man, just one shot. I, I'd, I'd be willing to bet you. Uh, I don't know, doing something crazy in the weight room. What's something that's really hard? Squat, I mean, squatting, pull-ups, I don't know the whole deal. But yeah, um, yeah Pete, I, think, I mean, I could yeah. talk to you for hours, but we got to gotta wrap her up here. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's been an bet, honor having you on. Yeah, the it, bet with each team now, each team, they always ask, hey, let me see you shoot. I'm getting ready to warm you guys up, stretch you guys out. Hey, yo, P Money, man, P Diddy, shoot, give me a shot. I said, no, no, I did chess today, I, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I challenged, this is another, I'm probably going to learn my lesson. Hopefully, I, hopefully I do. I say, if we go to the final four this year, you guys can put me through a 40-minute individual instruction. 40 minutes, you work me out on the court. Wow. If we go to the final four. And so it's kind of, uh, yeah, you know, I, I actually want to lose that bet because I want to hang another banner. But, uh, right. but, but yeah, when, it, when that happens, I'll let you know and you can come watch and be a part of it. And you guys, yeah. you can pay me back for all of the sick, sick things I did to you. You know, there's no paying back. <laughs> it's one day is not enough. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but no, it's been great, man. I, I could talk to you for, for days and weeks and, and uh, again, we're going to have to do a part two because we didn't, we didn't get to talk about your, just your relationship with coach white and just like the transition. Uh, but I'm sure it's been, it's been awesome. Cause you know, from, the, the, the few times I've gotten to just, um, you know, meet with Coach White and get to know him, he's, he's been exceptional. He's been a warrior. And I'm, and I'm sure it wasn't, uh, once you got to know him, you're like, I'm, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to work alongside, alongside this guy. I'm super excited for you coming up um, this next season. You, I mean, the challenge of just having eight new guys and, and uh, not knowing how the, the new transfer rules are going to affect the team. I'm, I'm pumped, man. And um, now that I'm working with SEC Network, going right. to get a chance to see you guys a lot more as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Coach White is the best, great human being, great coach. And he embraced me from the very first second he got this job. He, he And we'll get into this another time. But he said, hey, you're the best at what you do is what I've heard. Do what you do. 
we're family and he just embraced me from the very, very it. first second and just unbelievable to work for. Like I would not be successful if he didn't have my back and he's had my back from day one. But uh, yeah, I got some great coach white stories too. We, we could share. Yeah. Later. We're, we're yeah. going to have a, whenever you got time, we'll find a time, uh, uh, do a part two. Cause uh, I want to at some point dive into some just interesting um, facts and, and, and uh, scientific things. Cause you yeah. know, you, you've read so many books and, know so many things about the body that you know still would just blow my mind um that you taught me but anyways Preston thank you so much for your time in, in this window uh, I know you got a big conditioning test for the guys tomorrow can't wait to uh hear how that went how that goes but everyone this was episode four with Preston Green um the current and the best strength and conditioning coach out there in the country uh please remember to subscribe and share this episode it was a good one we're gonna have them on for a part two at some point for sure but everyone stay rowdy